Good afternoon, space flight enthusiasts, and welcome to this unexpected angry bulletin. Really exciting news. It appears that in two weeks, or probably even less than that, a new company, yet another new emerging company into the competitive space flight arena, is going to attempt to reach orbit from Western Europe. They have all their licenses, their testing is complete, and their launch window opens up on the 20th of March and will continue until the 30th, according to maritime notices on all of this. This is something that I absolutely would love to cover in person. I would love to jump on a plane and head to Andoya, Norway, where all of this is taking place, camp out and get ready to try to film this launch attempt. But when it comes right down to it, it's just something that I'm not in a position to do. The reason for this is, and the reason I keep asking to try to reach the 1% threshold on Patreon is if 1% of my subscribers would become Patreon supporters, even at the lowest level, the $3 level, I would have the necessary funds to go do things like this at the drop of a hat, something I would love to do to bring you this kind of exclusive content and just haven't been able to reach that goal just yet. And I'm telling you all this to explain why I keep doing these fundraising things. And number two, on this particular line of discussion, I want to thank those who have made contributions recently to get me to Space Symposium in Colorado Springs, the biggest aerospace conference in the United States. Very few journalists get journalistic accreditation for this particular event, especially YouTubers, almost never happens, but they've granted this to me, so I don't have to pay the outrageous over $1,000 entry fee to get into this conference, and every major aerospace company is going to be there, from Sierra Space to Lockheed Martin to Northrop to ULA to SpaceX to Rocket Lab. I mean, everybody is going to be there, so I want to thank those who have contributed thus far. I am 200 $150 of the way to my $800 goal. If that's something you'd like to help out with, all the details are in the description, and I will stop talking about that right now and get back to what's happening in Andoya, Norway, and this company, ESAR Aerospace. Even though I have covered a lot of German spaceflight-related companies, I haven't talked a lot about ESAR because ESAR like Andoya Spaceport, is extremely secretive. But this is what we know about this upcoming launch attempt and how ESAR Aerospace is going to open up the world of competitive space flight in Western Europe. This is the ESAR Aerospace Spectrum rocket. Unless you think that this is just going to be a bunch of CGI nonsense, well, here's the Spectrum sitting on the pad at Andoya Spaceport right now, ready to go. And as I mentioned in the introduction, the launch windows open up on the 20th of March, six days from now, between 12.30 and 16.30 Central European time throughout an 11-day launch period from the 20th of March to the 30th of March. This rocket has some impressive capabilities for a small-scale rocket that is typical for European launch providers these days. It can carry a full metric ton to orbit, which is more than triple the cargo capacity of the Rocket Lab Electron, meaning that there's a wide variety of customers, especially in Western Europe, that can make use of this rocket. If we're talking about deploying constellations of small sats or cube sats, this thing could deploy a large number of those satellites in a single launch and do it for a very low price. Right now, ESAR is targeting a price point of 10,000 euros per kilogram or $11,700, meaning that we're looking at $11.7 million per launch, which granted is substantially more expensive than a Falcon 9 per kilogram. However, if you're talking about a single dead dedicated launch for $11,700,000. It's much, much less than a Falcon 9 and double the cost of a Rocket Lab Electron to launch triple the payload. So a very competitive rocket indeed. And also the technology that's being used and the engineering, the construction, etc., 
all of that is quite cutting edge as well. There could not be a bigger difference between this company and another German launch provider that I talk about frequently, RFA. And the reason for that is RFA makes use of repurposed off-the-shelf components, mostly from the automotive industry for their rockets and their technology, whereas ESAR is a lot more like Rocket Lab. Everything is built in-house and a lot of it is 3D printed. The most complex parts of their rocket engines, called the Equila, by the way, are 3D printed from high-performance metals, enabling high design flexibility and part reduction with the shortest lead times for construction. Also, as far as carbon composites are concerned, the primary structure of the rocket is a single part carbon composite and is manufactured in an automated process. This lightweight material offers the highest payload performance, and yeah, and that's generally the case. One of the reasons why Rocket Lab can deliver sizable payloads with relatively small rockets. The Spectrum is powered by nine Aquila engines, which utilize liquid oxygen and propane, sort of an unusual fuel combination, propane being a little similar chemically to methane, but a pretty unique gas and arguably an extremely clean one. Burning propane apparently creates no appreciable greenhouse gases, although that's a subject that's up for debate, but one of the cleanest propellants that one could possibly use in a rocket. Again, something that's extremely important to many Western European customers who are trying to reduce their carbon footprint as much as possible. And now could not be a better time for ESAR to reach orbit. This week, while I was attending the Spacecom conference in London, England, it was very clear everybody had the same opinion. Europe needs its own sovereign launch capability because of deteriorating relations between the U.S. and Western European countries. Really, just about everybody was saying that American launch providers can no longer be exclusively relied upon, and it was absolutely crucial that Western European launch providers be able to pick up the slack. And obviously, Ariane Spas and the Ariane 6 and their Vega rockets can't handle all of it. And this is an opportunity that companies like ESAR Aerospace can definitely take advantage of. There are so many reasons that launching from Western Europe makes a lot more sense than launching from the United States, well, especially for European satellite manufacturers. Transporting your cargoes across the Atlantic is not only an expensive thing to do when you send your cargo and all of the technicians and support staff that are necessary to launch a satellite that all creates a substantial carbon footprint. And again, just about every Western European nation is focused on trying to keep all of that to a minimum. So launching from Andoya, Norway or Saxevoord in Scotland makes an enormous amount of sense. And there's another real big advantage that ESAR has over a lot of their competitors, and that comes in the field of funding. Apparently, European investors are sufficiently impressed with this company's technology technology to feed a lot of money into ESAR Aerospace's coffers, far more than most of their competitors. We're talking over 400 million euros in private funding on top of a recent 15 million euro award from the European Space Agency. There are very few European launch providers that are receiving that kind of private funding. And that kind of funding is absolutely crucial to ESAR's long-term survival because this first launch in a couple of weeks is highly unlikely to reach orbit. Most probably it's going to meet with some sort of unfortunate end. It will be interesting to see whether or not the in-house cutting edge technology that ESAR has been working on lately is capable of getting the job done on the first launch. Again, I will be utterly shocked if it does, but nevertheless, I have been surprised before. We, of course, wish ESAR the best of luck and the potential of becoming the first 
ever launch provider to reach orbit from a Western European launch site. History is about to be made. If ESAR doesn't do it, RFA is scheduled to launch in a few months as well. Their second attempt from Saks aboard Spaceport. There are so many Western European companies aiming for orbit this year. I think at least one of them, and probably more, are going to get the job done. And that's going to change the field of competitive spaceflight forever. Thanks again for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please check the description for various ways to support this content. And as always, stay angry about space.